The Opryland shows extend farther than the park. And this year, all the way to the World's Fair in Knoxville, Tennessee. Here's Janet Tyson with a report on Sing Tennessee. <laughs> One of the biggest attractions at Knoxville's 1982 World's Fair was the spirited Opryland production of Sing Tennessee. Capacity crowds packed the Tennessee Pavilion for an introduction to the state in that famous Opryland musical tradition. There's a celebration for all the nation. We're having a fair for all the world to see. Opryland production, there were weeks of intensive rehearsals before the show was ready for all the world to see. The work began in Opryland's Rehearsal Hall 2, guided by writer choral director George Mabry, choreographer Gene Whitaker, and director George Malinay. That, that, that sounds square, and the rhythm is square, unless you start doing something with the word bringing. There's always a, a sense of elation, and there's always a sense of worry. Is it going to make it? Is it going to be good? One. Is it going to be successful? Or the, is the audience going to enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, because we're going to be singing on stage and moving, take a breath after good and put the D on. Uncrown thy good with bra. Here's your pencil. Got it? I've lived with it a long time, and one of the thrills is to hear uh, these uh, terrific singers actually uh, bring it to life. Because, you know, it's, it's, this is nothing. What's on the page is absolutely nothing. It's what they bring to the, to the score and what they bring to the music themselves, the personalities and the voices. Seven, eight, one, and two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. People say, well, how much of your time is spent on working on the show? What percentage? All of it, you know, you start when you wake up thinking about the show, and you go through the day working on it. When you get home at night, you don't leave it because your, your, your head's still rolling. Now, what could I, how can I make that better? What can I do? You put the music back on, and you go on into the night, and you wake up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, you know, the light comes on, and you thought of a new move. So until that show is, is produced and over, your thoughts are with that show. I need to get to know them you know, to, to figure out how best to use them in certain places, uh, in movement to see, you know, who's good and who who can do certain things better than others, uh, to know where to put them on the stage, and in vocal to start seeing who can do solos and what have you, and also for an interpretive point of view, like this is the way we talked about the number being, this is the way my concept of the show is, and is the way it's being taught or the way it's being learned going to lend itself to that? Because one of the things is you have to build a foundation as these choral rehearsals and the dance movement rehearsals, build a certain foundation that then you build on as you develop the show and get the character to it and the interpretation. The biggest reward is that final product. And you know how much time you've put into it. You know how much time the kids have worked on the show. And you see it. And you see, you know that it's not developed fully, but yet you see the potential there. And you sit out there and you watch it and you think, yeah, it's going to happen. It's really going to happen. It's going to be good. They're going to make it good. One more time, we go back to the beginning. Two, three, four, one. Oh. We'll go on the road tomorrow. Great. After 200 hours of rehearsal, they took it on the road, down I-40 east to Knoxville, and made people from all over the world honorary citizens of America through the universal language of music. 